Welcome to July. Today, I'll be showing you how to design a button. Before now, you're doing it the wrong way using width and height. But today, I will show you how to use just padding in designing a button. Come, let me show you how to do that. All right, uh, I already have my VS Code set up. And I also have this page that you're seeing here on my browser. So um, when I make any change here, you can be able to see it on your browser immediately. All right, so now the first thing we need to do is to um, create a button, right? So how do you create a button? You use the button tag, which is this. Then you just have your text in between your button, right? All right, as you can see, this button is on a new line because this is um, a block level element. The H1 is a block level element, so you get to see it on a new line, right? And button is not a block level element, it's an inline element so i'll show you i'll just duplicate this to like explain why i said blocking okay, button is a inline element as you can see they all play side by side that means they're trying to take one line all right so this is not the reason why we're here so i want to show you the the formal way you're you're, you're writing your button you are styling your button using um height and width then i'll show you the constraints of using height and width in designing a button Right, so let's just add a style here, a style tag, so that we can have all our styles here, instead of creating an external style sheet. Right, so the next thing you need to do is to target your button. Let me just go directly by using the one of the um, selector, type selector, which is, um, I'll just say button, then I'll open the column breeze. Right, that, just to check that this thing is actually targeting the button here, right, then you just probably apply a background color to the button, and see red, right. As you can see, it's actually applying the style to the button. That way, we are targeting the button com correctly, right? So, the, let me show you the way you used to do it by using um, you know, height and um, width, right? So, let's remove this background color. And um, there are some default style that comes with the button, which is your border line. As you can see, there is a border line here, right? So, I will just take that off. I just put in border none, right? So it will take out the border. So as you can see, you also have like a default color, right? So let me just say, let me give it um, let's let me give this button a color. So say background color. Um, let me do dodge blue, right? All right, then I'll give the text color to be white. So we have our button. Now the conventional way of um. The formal way of you writing your button using uh, height and width is for you to like say if you want the button to like have space in between them you so you go by using height right you probably to say let's say 50 pixel and see how it looks like so 50 pixel is too much let's do 30 pixel all right this looks a little bit cool then for the the width the length of the button you end up using your width right your width property by saying maybe you want the button to like 50 pixel, right? Well, 50 pixel is small, let's do 150, all right, 150 pixel, right? As you can see now, this, this button looks cool, but when you start having issues, when you probably write a reusable component for button, like people who are writing React or Vue or Angular, and you want to like make this button reusable where anybody can call the button and pass whatever text you need to pass into the button. So the way you have issues is like when we are having a text that is longer than the, the width of the button, right? So I'll do something like this. Let's say download my song here, right? As you can see, you're already having a constraint. The text inside this button is already floating to the next line. And if you continue, and if the person is like using a text that is greater than the width of the container, it, which is um, um, 150 pixel. You see that the button is already having a new line. Though probably you can also use this a CSS property called white space to say no wrap, right? So that you're telling the button not to wrap into another line, right? But as you can see, the button text is floating out of the button container itself, right? So it's not advisable for you to use width and height in designing your button. So I'll show you a trick by using just padding. So I'll take out this padding, right? And also, I'll leave this white space. Like, white space 
um, no wrap. White space no wrap is telling the text not to move to the next line. So irrespective of the width of the button, the text, the irrespective of the width of the container where the button will be placed, the text will always still be on a line, single line. It will not break down to the next line. So what I will just do, the simple trick is using padding, right? So how do you use padding? You just um, go ahead and apply padding. So I'll show you the trick I used to use uh, in designing a button and giving like a coaster. So what I do is that I ensure that the space I'm giving between the top and bottom, um, I'll multiply it by two and apply it to the left and right. Okay. So let's say, for example, the first parameter here is for the top and bottom right. I'll probably say, let me do one, one uh, let me do hems, let me use hems. So hems is um, a measuring unit for CSS. So hems, we have hems, we have um, pixel, we have rems, we have um, percentage, we have vh, which is view height or wh, which is width, uh, your width height, right? So uh, view width, sorry, v, w. All right, so now I have my padding. As you can see, the button is looking cool already because I'm saying it should take at the top left, right, bottom, it should be one in rems, right? But this is not what uh, this is not what I want to do. So the next um, parameter I'm using, which is the, the guide that was have for the left and right, is just for you to apply two times this one ems, which will give you like two ems. So it will create like a better space between the edge of the button. As you can see, this button is already looking cool, right? So if we take this guy out, it will still be nice, right? And the button will still be on the same line you get. And if we add text, what this um, thing will do, help you to do, applying only padding, the button will always be the size of the container, right? Which is the button, the size, uh, the content, Will always take the size of the button rather will always take the size of the content right you no know, so as you can see the length of the text is greater and this guy is not restricted by anything but if you are using width where the width is already restricting the how long the button will end up becoming right so that's like one of the trick uh so using this uh, white space no wrap i'll show you the reason why it's advisable to always use it on your button because you don't want a situation whereby your button text is moving to uh, another line, right? You always want your button text to be on a single line. So let me give you a scenario. So I'll create a div here, and around the div, I'll I'll put the button inside the div, and I'll also apply. Let me just apply a class here. I'll see. Let me just call it container or button container. You can use any one. So here I will now style. I will not restrict this width of the button, right? Because this div is um, is a block level element. It's already taking uh, the full the full width of the page. So I will just define a border so that you can see what I'm I'm talking about, right? So this is the width of the button, um, the container right now, which is your div. So I will just restrict the width to like 150 pixel. Oh, sorry width of 150 pixel right and this is how it turns out to be so this is the point where you need your white space no wrap so irrespective of how the width of the container will end up be you also want your button to be on the text of your button to be on one line so you turn this guy on which I just turned off and you have this guy kicking off the container right but there are rare cases rare scenario where you your text of your button will be this long, right? So that's just the, the trick I have to show you. But let's reduce the text and make the button look cooler by applying um, border radius to the button and probably some load down shadow to the button, right? So this is it. This is how the button ring turns out to be, right? So let me take out this container. Let me just take out the style to still just be nice. Um, um, then I'll apply border radius to the button. Let me just organize this. So this color go up, padding, then white space since it's a text um property. So I'll just leave this guy like this. Alright, then the next thing I need to do is to apply border radius. So I'll just apply border radius of five pixels. Always 
make your border radius to be as minimal as possible except you want to do like a rounded a full rounded edge that's when you now be applying things like 30 pixel right so this is how your button will look see this button is already looking cooler using border radio so but i don't want to do a rounded button i just want a little edge so i'll, I'll probably use i always use for my button uh, i always use if i want like a little border radius i always use either four pixel or five pixel it makes it look cooler so you can use five or four pixels so this is my five pixel and the button is already looking great right you can also go ahead to like add other properties and um make your button look cooler by adding um box shadow to like elevate the button depending on how you want your button to look like so as you can see it is very easier for you to use just padding in creating your button and i believe today you've also learned how to apply white space no wrap which is like one of the text properties you can use to tell your text not to break to the next line and which is one of the like coolest css property i've ever encountered while designing button thank you for watching don't forget to click the like and subscribe button beneath and if you want more of this um subscribe to my youtube channel and every week i keep dropping video content so you get to learn more on how to use CSS and HTML in designing your web and making the web look good. Thank you for staying tuned. Happy new month and go and do exploit. Thank you.